jury has just found ex-Hillary Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman not guilty of lying to the FBI about a tip allegedly tying Donald Trump, then candidate Trump, to a, a Russian bank. A major defeat for the special counsel named by the Trump administration to look into the origins of the Russia investigation. A jury today acquitting a lawyer who was connected to the Clinton campaign who'd been accused of lying to the FBI. And I'm looking forward to getting back to the work that I love. Okay, my friends. Let's take a closer look together. After presenting strong evidence with months of constant hard work, it is surprising to notice that the jury in Washington has decided to discharge Michael Sussman, a former Hillary Clinton campaign lawyer, for lying to the FBI. Sussman, who has been investigated by special counsel John Durham for creating a fake Trump in Russia relationship during the 2016 elections, immediately received a strong reply from former President Donald Trump on his true social platform after the decision. Trump said, Our legal system is corrupt. Our judges and justices are highly partisan, compromised or just plain scared. Our borders are open. Our elections are rigged. Inflation is rampant. Gas prices and food costs are through the roof. Our military leadership is woke. Our country is going to hell. And Michael Sussman is not guilty. Former Trump campaign aide Jason Miller also heavily reacted to the unacceptable decision on the conservative platform Getter by arguing that Sussman admitted to giving opposition research to the FBI and not telling the Bureau that the research was conducted for Clinton. He ended his statement by writing, how did Sussman get off? Rigged system. Now, it should be noted that Sussman was accused of lying to the FBI because he said in the writing that he wanted to meet with a bureau officer to deliver information, but that he was not acting on behalf of a client. During the trial, Durham claimed that Sussman was acting on behalf of both the Clinton campaign and a client named Rodney Joff a technology executive who confessed that he was promised a top government job if Clinton managed to win the 2016 elections by spreading fake Trump in Russia relations. Sussman's lawyer, on the other hand, argued that Sussman was not acting on behalf of a client, despite the fact that Sussman previously under oath told the members of the House of Representatives he was. According to federal law, making a false statement to the government is punishable with five years imprisonment and eight years if the false statement is related to international or domestic terrorism. However, the jury undividedly found Sussman not guilty and defended him by stating, I don't think it should have been prosecuted. There are bigger things that affect the nation than a possible lie to the FBI. After the juror's decision, special counsel John Durham said, while we are disappointed in the outcome, we respect the jury's decision and thank them for their service. I also wanna recognize and thank the investigators and the prosecution team for their dedicated efforts in seeking truth and justice in this case. Tech giants like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are seeking to block a Texas law that prohibits social media platforms from banning users based on their political views. And the Supreme Court has blocked a state law that would have limited how social media platforms actually control content on their sites. Under the Texas law, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other sites would be unable to block content based on its viewpoint. Republican Governor Greg Abbott says the law was a response to social media companies silencing conservative ideas. As the Washington jury in Sussman's case hinted towards our corrupt legal system, the Supreme Court in another case contributed to more corruption after allowing the social media platforms in Texas to delete the political views of the citizens. In September 2021, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a law called HB 20 that focuses on stopping the social media platforms like Twitter from banning the accounts or deleting the views of people on political issues. Furthermore, the law also directed the social media platforms with more than 50 million active monthly users in the United States to establish a procedure where users can appeal against the social media platforms decisions of removing someone's post. However, the Supreme Court with a majority vote of five to four decided to temporarily block this law on May 31st. Surprisingly, all the five majority judges did not give any reason for blocking this law. While praising this decision, Silicon Valley giants claimed this law was unconstitutional in nature. NetChoice and the Computer and Communications Industry Association, CCIA, who filed the case said, we are encouraged that this attack on First Amendment rights has been halted 
until the court can fully evaluate the repercussions of Texas' ill-conceived statute. The Supreme Court, noting the constitutional risk of this law, is important not just for online companies and free speech, but for a key principle for democratic countries. No online platform, website, or newspaper should be directed by the government officials to carry certain speech. This has been a key tenet of our democracy for more than 200 years, and the Supreme Court has upheld that. Nevertheless, Justice Samuel Alito, who also drafted Roe v. Wade decision, stood strong with his views and called this law groundbreaking. While referring to the Pew Center report, Alito said that eight out of the 10 Americans obtained news from digital devices, which shows that social media platforms have transformed the way people communicate with each other and obtain news. Furthermore, Alito also cleared the air by stating to the applicants that whether the companies will ultimately win their case under the existing law is quite unclear. Stock market observers are sounding an alarm. I personally think we are right in maybe the biggest bubble of my career. Investors have loaded up on risky assets like housing, tech stocks, and even cryptocurrency. Is a recession in the forecast for the United States? It is the question many Americans are asking as the financial health of the country appears to become more strained. Stocks are down, inflation is up, and investors are moody. Nobody is asking it out loud, but everyone is wondering the same thing. Are we heading into a recession? The Russian-Ukraine war pushed us towards it. The supply chain effects from the Shanghai lockdown confirmed it, and Biden's weak decision-making power ensured that the U.S. economy will fall into a recession just like in 2008. Recent survey results have revealed that the majority of CEOs worldwide believe that the U.S. economy is slipping towards recession in the coming months. The survey was conducted by the conference board, which studies the top 1,000 public and private companies in 60 countries. The results confirm that around 57% of the CEOs believe that the U.S. economy is going to go through a very short, mild recession. However, the richest man in the world believes that the upcoming recession would last up to 18 long months. Dana M. Peterson, chief economist of the conference board, said, CEO confidence weakened further in the second quarter as executives contend with rising prices and supply chain challenges, which the war in Ukraine and renewed COVID restrictions in China exacerbated. Expectations for future conditions were also bleak, with 60% of executives anticipating the economy will worsen over the next six months, a marked rise from the 23% who held that view last quarter. Surprisingly, many business leaders are accepting this news in a positive and broader manner. Elon Musk recently on Twitter posted, yes, but this is actually a good thing. It has been raining on fools for too long. Some bankruptcies need to happen. Companies that are inherently negative cash flow, i.e. value destroyers, need to die so that they stop consuming resources. A similar positive reaction was also expressed by Wells Fargo CEO Charlie Scharf. He said, I think it's going to be hard to avoid some kind of recession. But I also get the fact that everyone is so strong going into this, which should hopefully provide a cushion so that whatever recession there is, if there is one, is short and not at all that deep. Nevertheless, Mike Davis, the founding partner at Olive Tree Ridge, a multi-strategy asset management firm, argued that the companies must actually plan for the worst. He said, I do think that we don't even know where the bottom is yet, but a lot of people are trying to play the timing game. I don't think that's the right move at all. Things are gonna get worse. In the end, Davis stressed that if companies can constantly deliver high quality products, Rather than informing the customers that they are out of stock or the quality of their goods has weakened, customers will continue to buy their products even if the cost of their products increase. Why does this keep happening? Why does this keep happening? Why? Wait, hey, 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 okay, 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 okay. He's just talking. Why does this keep happening? If you don't want in his face, I'm here. And why did you come here to the convention? You need to back up. You need to back up. Why? When 19 children died, 19 children died. With Americans increasingly on edge, though, the war of words over gun reform rages on in the nation's capital. After his latest podcast edition with scientist Lex Friedman, famous podcaster and UFC commentator Joe Rogan received a massive backlash from the Democrats for not supporting greater restrictions on the use of guns. While expressing deep pain over the Uvalde, Texas shooting incident, Joe argued that this country has a mental health problem that is disguised as a gun problem. 
Taking away gun rights from the people will only give the government more power to exploit people in whatever way they want. And once freedom is taken away from the people, it is almost impossible to get it back from the government, thus resulting in a completely totalitarian government like China. To be more specific, he said, what is the answer? Is the answer to take everyone's guns? Well, they are not going to give their guns up. Only criminals are going to have guns. It's not going to be a good situation. It's like, how do you stop that? No one knows how to stop that. While arguing against the government's efforts to take away the freedom of holding guns from the people, he said, I don't think it's wise to take all the guns away from the people and leave all the power to the government. We see how they are, even with an armed populace, they still have a tendency towards totalitarianism. And the more increased power and control you have over people, the easier it is for them to do what they do. And it's a natural inclination when you are a person in power to try to hold on power and acquire more power. And it's never there's never an inclination to give more power back to the people, to give more freedoms back to the people. An armed populace is necessary precaution against the possibility of a totalitarian government. He concluded, freedoms lost are rarely regained. However, soon after this show, many Democrats targeted Joe on social media. One said, Joe Rogan admits he's a moron, so why does anybody listen to him? While another one tweeted, Joe Rogan does not oppose gun control because of some deep logistical thought process he spent years cultivating. He opposes it because he knows he's built a predominantly large right-wing fan base and doesn't wish to upset them. Nevertheless, scientist Lex Freeman agreed with Joe by stating, this is much more a mental health problem. This is a tragedy, but there's also an element to this that it's a tragedy the way a hurricane is a tragedy, that there are cruel things happening in the world. And it's dangerous to generalize from those problems into something like what I hear about, there's a race war or there's a gun control problem. I'd like to thank you all for spending time with me. Don't forget, take a look at this video right up here and I'll see you next time.